So, how does the human rights in nature cause fit in the whole MA program? Well, to my mind, there are two main ways in which the human rights in Asia contributes to the MA in human rights uh, international program overall. And uh, first of all, this is uh, the only among the required courses that is regionally specific. Uh, and as such, it provides a bridge between the other required courses that address uh, the foundations of human rights studies, if you will, uh, and the electives in the second semester, which are uh, more specific in orientation. And uh, secondly, of course, the course also uh, contributes, uh, focuses on specific skills uh, that are important for thesis research and also for professional practice, and I think we'll come back to that again. But what are the objective of the course, what the student can expect to learn at the end of the course, and how are you going to teach it? Uh, well, let me first of all say something about the objectives of the course. Um, HR in Asia aims to introduce the landscape of human rights in Asia. And this uh, includes uh, historical and the historical and geopolitical background uh, of the current human rights situation. Uh, it includes uh, the institutional framework in the region. It includes the domestic implementation of human rights in some selected countries and then of course we will look also at current developments in human rights in the region. Um, the objectives are therefore first of all to provide uh, orientation knowledge uh, over human rights uh, in Asia and this knowledge is really uh, important uh, but then secondly as I've said uh, we also focus on a specific set of skills that we want to uh, train and promote in the course and this uh, is the documentation of uh, human rights issues which is very important. So um, it sounds, sorry, it sounds like quite a com comprehensive course. Do you expect any challenges for the student? Uh, uh, sorry, may I first say something also about the organization of the course? Oh, because. Sorry. Uh, uh, that is also quite important to me. Now, uh, of course, like all our courses, this is a three credit course, so that means roughly nine hours of study per week. Um, but I want to be clear that this is just a, a, a rough guideline, and especially students for whom uh, English is not the native language, uh, more time might be required. But uh, there is something uh, special about this semester, obviously, since we uh, cannot meet in the classroom, at least for the most time, uh, for the most part. And so uh, the, we have six hours of independent private study. And that means, uh, basically, as in other semesters, too, the preparation of the classes, the reading assignments, the writing assignments. But, and I would really like to highlight that, also reviewing the classes. Uh, following up on issues that might not be clear, filling in gaps, uh, things that have not been understood, uh, whatever the case might be. So really studying afterwards, not just closing the book and, and uh, moving on to the next session. And then we have uh, three hours uh, that I would describe as uh, guided interactive learning guided interactive learning. So normally, of course, we would meet three hours in class uh, in a normal term. Uh, this is not possible this term. We will meet online together in the group uh, for some part of these uh, three hours, but not three hours in a block each week. And uh, interactive, uh, guided interactive learning uh, also means uh, group and pair work online uh, under uh, the supervision and instruction of the various lecturers and we will have various lecturers in the course uh, and uh, discussions uh, involving also the, uh, the course uh, lecturer uh, but it might also mean actually asynchronous discussions so discussions on a, an online forum uh, where we exchange our views, uh, our arguments in writing. And that has actually also certain advantages because uh, one can think a little longer, one can go uh, in greater depth. Uh, and so this will be the format for the course uh, this term. 
So apart from the online teaching and learning, what are other challenges that students may face to for this course? Yeah, let me first say something about uh, the term challenge. It sounds so threatening, perhaps, but uh, to my mind, challenges are really essential to teaching. So to put it into a simple formula, without challenges, there is no personal, no intellectual, and no uh, professional growth. So we, we need the challenges. Uh, challenges are not uh, bad. Uh, the challenges that we will face uh, in this uh, course that we want to uh, tackle in this course are uh, for uh, in many respects the same as in all other courses. Of course there will be uh, a lot of reading and writing, uh, discussion, uh, there will also be the, the use of, of academic English, uh, of uh, discussing, thinking about human rights studies in a language that for most of us is not our own and that opens up new possibilities but certainly also creates uh, uh, a certain uh, new, uh, uh, certain additional difficulties and requires more effort, uh, but then also more potential of uh, for growth than the use of only one language uh, to think about human rights studies. So in that sense, uh, the course is not different from from all the others. Um, but I want to say also something about how to get the most out of these challenges, yes. how to make the most of uh, of the course essentially and I think to my mind uh, the most important thing is first of all to take responsibility uh, uh, for uh, one's learning from the get-go. That's, that's really essential and that means uh, to show initiative, to be proactive, to uh, follow up on points that need uh, further work mm -hmm. and right from the start mm -hmm. not only at the very end not only when it can't be avoided anymore also uh, of course this time management and, and, and staying on top of things is always a challenge and I realize that but I think that is uh, really essential remaining proactive remaining on the ball and uh, that requires first of all of course private study again independent work it requires also exchange with other students mm -hmm. uh, in the course in, in the same year, but please also uh, with our students in the previous years uh, mm -hmm. who are uh, here, who are working on their thesis and who are available and can be contacted via, via email and, and Skype and uh, line or mm -hmm. in other ways just uh, as easily as uh, the students in the same year. And of course uh, it also means to uh, remain in touch, get in touch with the uh, course instructors. Uh, is that is to my mind really our role uh, to help the students uh, learn and of course that means to be there in particular when uh, there are difficulties. Uh, so I think that is really critical that uh, students get into touch with the lecturers or with me as course coordinator and right away, whenever there is any question. So be proactive, that is the key to making the most out of the challenges uh, that helps us uh, help us to grow and learn. Yeah. So you mentioned about what the student can do during the semester, but is there anything that they can prepare for the course to make sure that they can get the best out of it? Yeah, I would say uh, that it uh, would be useful to refresh or uh, one's memory of the uh, political, geographic, uh, physical map of, uh, of Asia uh, and uh, also to look up information, current information on uh, the Asian economies, uh, the demographics of the various parts of Asia. Uh, the World Bank has very useful data, for example, but one could also have a look, for example, at the uh, Human Development Index that is published by the UN Development Program. Uh, one doesn't have to shy away for basic information also from Wikipedia, for example, to look up information on, say, uh, the population of Thailand, the languages spoken in the country, how many languages are spoken in Southeast Asia, and so on. Uh, and that can be, be very interesting. Finally, I also have a reading recommendation. Uh, I would recommend a book by Craig Lockhart uh, that's published uh, was published in 2009 by Oxford University Press. 
the title is Southeast Asia in World History. Mm -hmm. Southeast Asia in World History is the last chapter that covers a modern and contemporary period. Mm -hmm. And the book is uh, available cheaply in a digital edition mm -hmm. from a uh, well-known well -known online bookstore, mm -hmm. yes. which we don't name. <laughs> okay, thank you.